Um, we got uh, Dr. Fauci, who will be throwing uh, the, the uh, first pitch at the, uh, the, the Nationals uh, opener. Um, but do you guys think that we're going to run into an issue with COVID, being that Major League Baseball is not being played in the bubble and there's still going to be the traveling and so many moving parts? Absolutely, 100%. You know, you you talk about the Blue Jays earlier. They came out and they basically had a a system in which they were going to find players if they weren't in their hotel rooms and not going out there and, you know, following these rules for, for sure. I think it was like $750,000 I saw if a player did skip curfew or break break some of the rules there. But regardless or not, you look at New York, right? Let's say the Yankees and – the Mets, for example, playing here in New York. Yes, they're going to be following their own protocols, everything like that. But realistically, who's going to stop these players from going out there, trying to get food or trying to go out there and, and get some something, trying to get some fresh air at all, stuff like that. Anything can happen here from here on out. And the weather is hot. So this weather has been known so far from what we've seen to kill this virus so far. There's no cure yet. And also, with everything going on, you know, the, the cold air is going to be coming soon. Is there, They're going to be play, having these playoff games. If there is, if there is any playoffs here, uh, is it going to be at a neutral site? Is it going to be, you know, we don't know that yet. So we all have, we all have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah I think it, we still haven't cleared all the hurdles when it, in regards to uh, Major League Baseball because we know – Florida, the numbers continue to spike. Texas, Arizona, um, which all host major league teams. So I think there will be some hiccup at some point. Um, only thing we can hope for is that it's something very minimal. Uh, maybe a guy here or there and it's an isolated situation. Uh, but as you also mentioned, Will, you know, we can't stop who these guys come in contact with away from the field. So if a guy decides to go and get something to eat or hang out or a guy decides to go see a girl that he's been dealing with, like, we can't stop any of those interactions that could potentially put them in harm's way of, of mm -hmm. getting the virus. So I think there are still a lot of hurdles to clear, but the fact that we're this close and nothing's come up yet is a good sign so far. Yeah, I think um, my, my fear is, you know, a guy contracts it and now he has to miss two weeks. Maybe not so much during the regular season because I think they'll be able to compensate for that, but – you know, like you mentioned, we're going into into the playoffs. Now we're talking about the weather changing, the temperature coming down. You know, God forbid you lose a guy like Aaron Judge for two weeks in the playoffs, or 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 or, or, or Bryce Harper or, or or Matt Scherzer, one of these top guys, and they got to be quarantined for two weeks during the playoffs. You could be bumped out. You know what I mean? Early in 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 the season, or 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 you got to play a wild card game, and now you don't have your your ace because. He got he's got COVID and you know what I'm saying? Now you now you out of the playoffs real fast. So that would be my concern. Um I I wonder if 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 Major League Baseball is doing some kind of bubble prep for the playoffs, just because once we get to that point, we know all right, there's only gonna be this many teams. So it, it is possible for us if 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 there's no vaccine or anything like that, come you know, come September, October where we can bring all of these teams together into a bubble type uh, situation just for the playoffs. Um, so I don't know if they're, if, if they're actually game planning something like that, but that would just be my fear as far as with COVID. Because I think if it's just one or two guys during the season and you got to miss two weeks, we'll, we'll look at it as you're just being on, on, the, on the DL, um, you know, for, for a little while, then you come back and you get back in the swing of things, you know, and guys will just have to fill in for you. But in the playoffs, you lose key guys because of COVID, that's going to be rough to bounce back from. Absolutely. And we're seeing it now for the first couple of weeks of the season. So, you know, we got to see DJ LeMahieu obviously miss out on a couple, a couple of weeks, even though it's not regular season time. I believe Austin uh, Meadows, or the center fielder for the Tampa Bay Rays, contracted the virus, and he's going to have to miss it two weeks for sure. You know, who knows what's going to happen here at this point in time. And, you know, we all we all have to take it one day at a time at this point. So yeah, that's two weeks. Yeah, and and, and trip you. But uh, I was gonna say trip. You brought up a great point about a bubble for the playoffs. I would I would have to assume that that has to be a, a discussion going on right now because 
we see the way the schedule has been laid out and you're only playing teams within your region. You know, the East is playing East Coast team, the West. So once we get into playoff times, you're going to want to eliminate those East Coast teams flying West and vice versa. You're going to have to come up with some sort of system where those teams can eliminate that cross-country travel to have to play each other. Right. Now, the only thing is, so now um, there's, if that is the case, though, then we're not, there's not going to be no, no, no home field uh, for the World Series, though, because especially if there's a bubble, because it's just going to be wherever the bubble is at, which I would, if, if that is the case, I would assume it'll just be in a central uh, location, as you know, what I mean, for, for everybody to get to, and then that's it. We're, we're locked in, so they, so it may not be no no home home field going into the playoffs. It's now, it's, it's just it's, it's it's all about who's who's better on the mound that day. Absolutely, and not only that too, but think about that from the playoff perspective with the playoff bubble idea, uh, guys. You look at let's say if right now. Like in the NHL, right? You have five games a day. Obviously, you have three and two, and you have uh, hockey all day, right? Now you're looking at it from the playoff perspective for baseball. You know, in hockey, you could have unlimited overtime until sudden death. Now with these new rules coming in for baseball, you know, having a runner on second base, what is that going to happen as far as the playoffs come, are they going to still have the runner on second base? Is there going to be a time limit here as far as what's going on to keep the next game going on? Players got to warm up everything like that for the next game. But that's something that, you know, for, for it to happen down the road. Yeah, they, yeah. They've, already, they've already announced that they're not going to do the runner on second base in the playoffs. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. It'll be, it'll, right. Yeah, it's, it's only going to be regular season. It won't be for the playoffs this year. However, they will explore to use it in the future. Gotcha. Um, and, and the same thing with the DH rule, as we know that the National League will use the DH this year, and it's kind of a test study for them to see if they want to move forward with it permanently. Correct. Um, but, but as you mentioned, well, yeah, it, it's a lot of different things. If you throw a playoff bubble in, how many games would you have a day in the bubble? Right. Um, you know, how early would these games be starting? Because typically a playoff game starts at 7 p.m., and guys are accustomed to that. So now if you're telling me we got to have four playoff games all in this one stadium, guess what? We got to start these games at noon. We got to get these games going as early as possible. Right. And that throws guys rhythm off because you can't get to the ballpark and do what you normally do. Right. They've had, they've had the noon start times in the playoffs because of the 10 teams over the past, you know, five years that we, that they've been doing it. Even prior to that, they've been having the day games on, you know, but we got to see what happens at that point in time, but it's going to be a very interesting time. Make no mistake about it. Yeah. It's, you know, the thing about it is it's pretty much everything is going to be trial and error going into the season because we don't know, one, we don't know what to expect, and two, we don't know how long, you know, this COVID is going to be a threat to, you know, to the United States, I mean, to the world, really, but if we just, you know, particularly with, with sports, we don't know how long this thing is going to take effect. So everything is kind of trial and error, trying to keep the players safe as trial and error. Um, you know, I know they're, they're doing a lot of testing, and it was it was it was a small percentage of the players that were that actually tested positive, and and um as far as the coaching staffs as well, it was a small percentage, but you know that small percentage can 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 escalate really fast yep. if guys aren't aren't doing the right thing, um you know. But I'm 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 hopeful you know for the season, um especially if they wind up doing a bubble, just because I'm liking what I'm seeing from the NBA uh, bubble right now. And I know they just put out a, a new uh, set of results where, where every player tested um, in the bubble right now was negative for COVID. So, I, you know, I think that this thing can be done with baseball, especially, you know, when you look at the fact that, you know, guys don't really come in contact with each other in baseball as they do in, in other sports, you know, with the exception of when you're tagging somebody out. So I think that as long as the players are conscious of what they're doing and really kind of still being in quarantine with, within themselves, keeping a straight home field, home field, you know what I'm saying, not making too many extra stops, not doing, not having the, 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 the Dak and uh, Zeke parties, hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think yeah. that they can definitely work this thing out. Yeah, I agree. I, I think they could make it happen. Absolutely. Same here. Now – and go. I want to go back to Dr. Fauci. He's a small guy. Does does and I'm going. To, does does his pitch is his pitch better than Fifty Cent's pitch? What y'all think? Can he can he can he get it across the plate? He he may not get it across the plate, um, 
he he may throw, you know, he he may the catcher may have to save him there, but I think it'll he'll have better aim than fifty did. It's yeah, amazing. I hope so. He's a science guy, so I mean, hopefully he, he may have the numbers down. Where it's like, all right, if I thought at this angle or the curve or the fast, you know, he can get, he can get that in there. Fifty was just, you know, that was just over the top. But I don't know what happened. Well, let's look at it like this too, right? Fauci is obviously the doctor that's going on everything like that. You got to see what's going on with what happened with uh, back in 2001, George Bush threw the first pitch. It was a strike, everything like that. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Dr. Fauci to go out there and throw a strike. And basically, you know, Mr. Bush went and he gave the thumbs up afterwards saying everything's okay. It's a sign. Uh, not only did he throw it over, but everything's fine, you know, in the country. Maybe Fauci pitches a perfect strike. And basically tell, tell us the TV cameras or whoever's in the stands, like, hey, thumbs up, everything's good. You know, maybe anything can happen like that. So if, so if he gets it over the plate, strike, uh, right in the strike zone, I right. said COVID's over. I, I'm not saying COVID's over. I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, thumbs up to, like, you know, hey, everything's – no matter what, as Americans, we're going to make it through. That, oh, no, that's, know, that's just that's a, a, just a right. positive message. Yeah, right. If he if he if, if he throws the strike, it, it's almost a symbol of like we're on our way back. Everything looks yep. better. But we should be asking too, like you said, in regards to Dr. Fauci, is he going to be throwing off the mound or is he going to be in front of the mound? Because remember, sometimes they let you throw in front of the mound. Right. But then does it count? I don't know if that that, that makes me feel comfortable. Everything's going to be okay if he didn't throw from the mound. Well, considering his considering his age, I, I would give him the pass on it. How old is he? About it was in his in the seventies, right? Was he in his eighties? Right, and considering his age, <laughs> but he's but he's a doctor, so he's probably keeps himself in good shape. I'm just saying, you know, what I'm saying for his age, right? So but I we got to see, right, like, no. see Doctor Fauci, but we got to well, treat I, him the same I'm way we treat some some of the old timers. We got we to gotta treat them the way we treat some of the old timers, though. And when the old timers game, they don't pitch off the mound; they pitch from right in front of the mound, right. All right, he's 79. I just I just checked out the number. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Okay, I just found out something. All uh-huh. right, right now that I didn't know before, but now that I know this is going down, he's definitely pitching off the mound, and it's going to be a strike. I just figured this thing out, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Okay. He's from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. That's it. It's <laughs> over. He's from Brooklyn. He's got it. It's going over the mound, and COVID's out of here after this, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from your mouth to God's ears, Anthony. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'm, I'm trying. I'm out here trying. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Live the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real 